Welcome to Friday's edition of the Nightly Nuge, which, of course, is Friday free for all. Happy Friday free for all, Ted. Every day is a free for all. This is the Gibson Birdland made by the greatest luthiers in the, in the world down in Kalamazoo, Michigan. I'm sorry, I can't help myself. Actually, I'm not sorry. I play my guitar every day and it cleanses my soul. And if I may, on the nightly news with my buddy Keith, because I know you believe in this. Thank you, world, for celebrating my Detroit Motown funk brother musical dreams. I've been doing this now for over 65 years. I've never had more fun doing it. I have a new record coming out called Ted Nugent, Detroit Muscle, because there is not just horsepower muscle from the Motor City, but unbelievably globally loved musical muscle. And we celebrate that with Greg Smith on bass, Jason Hartless from Detroit on drums. We just recorded this new album, Detroit Muscle, and it is a riot. And all you music lovers out there, I know we're heartbroke because most music nowadays sound like some nasty cartoon music or something you'd hear at the county fair on a broken Ferris wheel. It's really garbage music out there where there's hope for real music lovers because Uncle Ted has come to the rescue and there's licks like this on the new record. They go... And it just grinds. It will make you dance, probably naked. And they can check that out at tednugent.com, right, Ted? I think so. Yeah, this is the first song, <laughs> Come and Take It. It's a love song to Joe Biden and Beto O'Rourke. I said, hey, Joe, hey, hey, Beto, come and take it. It's a love song. And the new, the new song coming out here in another week or so is called American Campfire, because everybody loves the American Campfire. Don't you hear it calling your name? So, yeah, it's yeah. a great, great time for music lovers everywhere, Keith. Well, you know, we always talk about music on Friday, and that's kind of a sad uh, Friday for you, I know. And really, everyone that loves good music, uh, we lost uh, the legendary Meatloaf. You had a relationship. Yeah, Marvin A. Day. Let me tell you a quick uh, overview of the great Marvin A. Day, a.k.a. A. Meatloaf. <laughs> What a great guy. I, I hope that uh, Tim has some photos of me picking up meatloaf. Do you have that photo? I'm in my loincloth giving meatloaf the ultimate Detroit grizzly bear hug. Maybe it was a Fred bear hug, but I'm going to make sure you have that to put on the uh, screen behind me. But I met meatloaf when he had a duet, Stoney and Meatloaf in Detroit, 1967. And they would open up for the Amboy Dukes because they're notorious for soulful, soulful, grinding, believable, passionate, emotional music. Stoney was this beautiful, redheaded gal who ended up singing background for Bob Seger and had her own solo career, just an incredibly gifted, gorgeous, wonderful woman. Funny, but funny is probably the most important thing about Meatloaf beyond his incredible operatic grinding, soulful voice. He was a funny, funny guy. And when it came time to record my free for all Friday, free for all record, I had a couple of songs like Street Rats and Hammer Down, just grinding high energy Detroit muscle songs. And so I called old Meatloaf. I said, hey, Meatloaf, I got a new record coming out. And of course, the Ted Nugent album was Stranglehold and all those killer songs. Have there been any more killer songs than that? It had really hit everybody right between the eyes. So the second album was highly anticipated. So Meatloaf came in and sang on Street Rats and Hammer Down and Together and I Love You So I Told You a Lie and just, just breathed fire into my music. And he was a great work ethic, unbelievable work ethic, never late, always put his heart and soul into every lyric, every song, every phrase. He would put everything he had into it, which was substantial. You show the picture of me picking him up. Everything he had was substantial. I was the only guy who could pick him up off the, off the ground. And uh, we had a great time, but he uh, went on to sell, uh, I, I heard a hundred million albums, The Bat Out of Hell and some of his incredible performances, just a legendary uh, salute to the great meatloaf. And I think we can end it by saying, we did uh, some comments about, how the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is disrespectful to Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley by bringing in people that don't deserve to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, like Grandmaster Flash, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Grandmaster Flash, Patti Smith. Who's Patti Smith? Madonna? ABBA? So those people are in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but Meatloaf isn't? Do, does anything else have to be said about the dishonesty and the... And the that must be that must be the governor and the and the disrespect 
to real rock and roll to put those people in Grandmaster Flash and Abba and Madonna and Patti Smith, but not Meatloaf. So let's celebrate the great music of Meatloaf. Uh, Street Rats was a great song that went. And he sang his substantial ass on every song. So in the wind, the great musicians and artists will always be with us because they left a mark because of their heart and soul. And Meatloaf epitomized artistic and we the people, freedom, work ethic, heart and soul. May he rest in peace and we can listen to the Meatloaf soundtrack anytime we want. Isn't that, isn't that a good fortune for us? Yeah, it is. Well, thanks for the personal insight. And I'll just leave our listeners with this thought. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, no meatloaf, no Ted Nugent. Is that really a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I think, I think not. Hey, if you guys come back next week, we'll have some more of the nightly nudge right here. I'll be playing my Gibson Birdland if you need me.